Okay, so in this video, we're going to um, continue to practice using the chain rule. Um, but in this case, we're going to be using the chain rule multiple times to find the derivative of tangent of tangent of tangent of x. And so for me, um, I think the most difficult part of finding the derivative to a function like this is asking ourselves, um, how many times do I have to use the chain rule and making sure that I don't um, like mix up um, the different placeholders placeholders that I'll have to use. So before we get started, um, two key pieces of information that we'll need is we should know what the chain rule is, and we should also know that um, the derivative of the most like basic function um, of what this is related to, tangent of x, is secant squared of x. So when I'm starting this problem, I'm going to be um, doing the same thing as I would when I was doing a chain rule example with um, a single use. In this case, I'm going to look at this function, and I say, well, that's a really complicated function. I don't know how to find the derivative of that, but I do know how to find the derivative of tangent of x. And so that's going to dictate um, what I'm going to create for my first placeholder. So because I know what tangent of x is, that means I'm going to rewrite this entire um, function tangent of tangent of x as my first placeholder. So I'm going to say let u equal tangent of tangent of x. And that way, when I am finding um, the derivative of this function, instead of writing d um, over d of x, I'm going to write d of d of u times tangent of u. But again, because I was using u as a placeholder for this more complicated function, then I'm going to have times the derivative of u of the derivative of x sorry, this is actually the derivative of u with respect to x of the function tangent of tangent of x. Okay, so at this point I can look at my function again and I say, well, I do know how to take the derivative of this portion, but again, this is a function that's still more complicated than what I know how to take. Again, I know how to take the derivative of tangent of x. So this is what is prompting me to ask myself, should I use the chain rule again? And in this case, I'm going to say, yes, I should. So again, because I know how to take the derivative of the tangent of x, I'm going to say, let's use the chain rule again. And I'm going to use a different placeholder this time. And I'll say, let v equal tangent of x. So this time, when I'm rewriting my derivative, and I'm going to keep everything the same just until we get to the end, I'm going to have the derivative of d with respect to u of tangent of u. And now, because I'm replacing tangent of x with v, I'm going to be taking the derivative of u with respect to v. Of tangent of v. And then now, because, again, v was a placeholder for tangent of x, I'll be taking the derivative of v with respect to x of tangent of x. So at this point, I ask myself, OK, is this a function that I know how to take the derivative of? And the answer is yes. This is a basic trig function. I already know how to take the derivative. Um, so at this point, I can tell myself, OK, I don't have to use the chain rule anymore. And I can just continue um, taking the derivative of the entire function. So um, again, using what we know, we know that the derivative with respect to x of tangent of x is secant squared x. In this case, I know that I will have the derivative with respect to u of tangent of u is secant squared u. <clears throat> the derivative with respect to v of tangent of v is secant squared v. And the derivative of v with respect to x of tangent of x is secant squared x. So I'm going to move my work, put it up here. And we're almost done with this problem, actually. The last thing I would just do is to rewrite all of my derivatives. So um, I'm not using these placeholders, but instead I'm using the functions that they were actually representing in the first place. So in this case, I'm going to have, let's see, I'm going to erase this part so I know I have enough room. OK, so instead of secant of u, I'm going to have secant squared of tangent of tangent of x.
times secant squared of v, where v is tangent of x, secant squared of v, which was tangent of x, and then lastly, times secant squared of x. So here we have a really long answer for our composition of functions. The one last thing I'd ask myself is, is there a way that I can simplify this function more? And in this case, the answer is actually no. Um, usually, we're used to hearing if we have like multiple functions that start with the same part that we can combine them together. But in this case, remember, we have a composition of functions. So I'm imagining. Um, when I used the example in a previous video of like opening up a Russian doll and there's a smaller doll inside it, in this case, I have a tangent function and then a tangent function inside of that one. So this is a totally different function than the secant squared of tangent of x and even um, secant squared of x. So in this case, um, there's no further simplification that I can do. And this is it. This is um, you know a really hard example. So hopefully this is helpful um, as you find yourself using the chain rule multiple times and other problems.